All right, what's up, guys? It's going to be a little bit of a different video today. I was scrolled around online looking at some stuff for an upcoming video. Later this week, we're going to be rebooking a WrestleMania. Which one yet? Undecided, but stay tuned for that. But if you saw the poll in the community tab the other day, you know WrestleMania 23 was one of the options for that video. And I was scrolling around online and came across this article, which I thought was pretty interesting. So let's make a video about it. And it's talking about original plans for WrestleMania 23. And it was only posted a couple of, of months ago, as you guys can see. And the only thing familiar with, like, from my knowledge of the original plans for WrestleMania 23 were Triple H and John Cena before Triple H got injured. Shawn Michaels ended up being the replacement. But there's a couple other things in this article that I thought were pretty interesting and I wasn't aware of. I don't know how true this stuff is, but whether it's true or not, it still is pretty interesting to talk about. So let's just talk about it anyway. So, like, just reading this opening line, it says, One single injury changed the entire course of WrestleMania 23, which is completely true. Triple H went down with injury at New Year's Revolution 2007. Everything pretty much changed after that. And I think it even says here that Undertaker and Batista was like one of the only set plans out of like the main matches of WrestleMania 23 that didn't end up getting changed. And I think that was even supposed to happen at WrestleMania 22 before Batista got hurt. So that, you know, makes sense. It was going to be on the 23 card no matter what. But it says WrestleMania 23 saw some huge matches taking place. John Cena and Shawn Michaels, Undertaker and Batista. Kane and the Great Khali uh, imitated Hogan and Andre, which, uh, you know was what it was. I don't think anybody's looking back at WrestleMania 23 like, man, Kane and Kali. It was like Hogan and Andre all, all, all over again, but evidently there was supposed to be another match that was supposed to fill the Hogan and Andre void, which we'll get to. And of course, they're referencing Hogan and Andre because this was 20 years after WrestleMania 3 back in uh, Michigan where Hogan and Andre had, you know, their legendary WrestleMania 23, or WrestleMania 3 matchup. So WrestleMania 23 original plans, John Cena versus Triple H. Now, of course, that was the rematch to WrestleMania 22. Looks like they were going to run it back at WrestleMania 23. Now, this is the only thing I heard before. Like, I don't, I don't even know when the first time I heard this, but it was definitely a long uh, time ago now. And definitely seemed like they were going this route. Not that they were, like, teasing it actively on television from my recollection, because obviously DX was together at the time. DX fought rated RKO at New Year's Revolution, as it says here. Um, and then Triple H blew his knee out on uh, one of the pedigrees, and then... I think the match even went to like a no con or disqualification or something like that but obviously that was you know the end of triple h up until that summer so he was off 23 and Shawn michaels ends up taking his spot which obviously leads to a you know legendary match a great wrestlemania uh, main event that year but evidently they were going triple h and john cena and i'm a fan of their 22 matchup i know some people i don't want to say some people aren't but like obviously no matter what it wasn't going to be on the level of sean and cena so we still you know ended up working out for the best technically and you know one thing we did get in 2009 was Triple H versus Shawn Michaels versus John Cena in a triple threat for the WWE title. I'm surprised that wasn't one of the plans for WrestleMania 23. With DX, you know, being, you know, hot on television at the time and really, I think they might have teamed up with John Cena even like a six-man tag. They, that just seems like a more obvious route than just going a one-on-one -on -one for 23 back in the day. So I'm surprised that wasn't a rumored plan. But then we get into some real interesting stuff. Booker T evidently or king booker what he was at the time was supposed to fight Shawn michaels and i believe this states that this was going to be the battle of the billionaires match unless i'm incorrect but we'll find out so obviously this was off because Shawn michaels ended up taking triple h's spot in the main event booker was in money in the bank that's late. it doesn't elaborate all right then i saw another article it's not this one i literally read another article today it's not this one i'll try to find it if i can't whatever that said that Michaels and Booker was the original matchup for the Battle of the Billionaires instead of Bobby Lashley representing Donald Trump and Umaga representing, you know, Vince McMahon. Uh, real hot occasion to be talking about those guys. But uh, evidently, originally, it was supposed to be Shawn Michaels representing Trump and uh, Booker T or King Booker representing Vince McMahon. I just, I was today years old when I found that out. And obviously, again, this is the second article that I saw talking about Sean versus Booker. This one doesn't say anything about the Battle of the Billionaires, but I'm telling you, I saw it. So you know how earlier I mentioned there was another match that was supposed to feature the, the Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, you know, kind of resemblance, if you will. Well, it was this. Evidently, Hulk Hogan versus Big Show was loosely penciled in for WrestleMania 23 at one point. And I believe it says here, one of the big reasons that this match didn't happen was, uh, Big Show, obviously, as it says, rehab, uh, rehabbing a back injury. He just left 
the WWE a few months prior, December uh, to December 2006, the last time we saw him until No Way Out 2008. And let me just read this. It says, WWE tried to pay tribute to the iconic Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant match with another huge match at Mania 23. Vince drew up tentative plans to pit Hulk Hogan against another giant in the big show for a huge marquee match 20 years after Hogan and Andre's titanic clash at WrestleMania 3. Big Show was struggling at weight at the time, left the company, rehabbing a back injury. Big Show wasn't signed to WWE, but reportedly was ready to come back for the match against Hogan. However, plans changed. That caused Big Show to pull out of the match. According to good old JR, Jim Ross, Big Show refused to lose to Hogan at WrestleMania 23, which is extremely interesting. Also because, and I remember seeing a clip of this match like recently, because I, I don't, it was a non WWE sanctioned match, as it says here. I don't know what indie or if this was like a Hulk Hogan hosted show or something like that, but Big Show loses to Hogan at some match, the wrestling match they had in Memphis, like just a few weeks after WrestleMania. And that I remember like seeing, maybe not recently, but a while ago. Big Show versus Hogan obviously wouldn't have been uh, anything to see probably in 2007, but um, I mean, I probably would have preferred Hogan and Big Show versus Kane and Kali as the Andre the Giant Hogan, you know, marquee resemblance matchup, but it is what it is. Ric Flair versus Mr. Kennedy, which did end up happening at No Way Out uh, 2008, but according to a shoot interview with the two-time Hall of Famer Ric Flair, he was supposed to wrestle a singles match with Mr. Kennedy at WrestleMania 23. Uh, the original plan for the match unknown, including the story going into the bout and who would win, likely Mr. Kennedy, because obviously he was going on for a huge push at the time. Kennedy went on to win Money in the Bank, which didn't, you know, mount to anything, but Mr. Mr. Kennedy was getting a solid push for a while there in 06 and 2007. So him going over Ric Flair at 23, I mean, would have made a lot of sense. Would have been a pretty solid matchup. I don't really remember their 2008 matchup that, you know, well at all, but I'm sure it was pretty good. And Ric Flair, you know, was, could, could go up until the end, let's be real. Uh, and Mr. Kennedy was good, you know, so I'm surprised. I don't want to say I'm surprised this matchup didn't end up on the card. I, and I'm shocked that... This did it, I guess, because they wanted to put the money in the bank briefcase on Mr. Kennedy, but like, and then Flair ends up in like a pre show tag team matchup. I think it's him and Carlito versus Chavo and Gregory Helms or something like that. I could be wrong, but like, honestly, this match could have still taken place. It's not like some of these other matches where, you know, there was a trickle down effect because of the Triple H injury or anything like that or Big Show. I'm not sure why. I guess, like I said, I guess the only reason this match didn't take place because Kennedy won Money in the Bank. Edge versus Randy Orton. Now, this was definitely getting billed to uh, on Monday Night Raw at the time. Rated RKO had a lot of dissension in uh, early 2007, leading up to the Rumble and post Royal Rumble. Uh, but then they never go on to have the one on one matchup. And I don't know if it says specifically. Uh, why here if again, it's just you know Triple H gets injured Michael's in and then I guess they're just trying to stack up money in the bank It says here rated RKO were due to beat DX at New Year's Revolution Although this was uh to build to a rematch some weeks later with DX picking up the win and winning back the World Tag Team Championships, which would, you know, have a falling out uh, between Edge and Randy Orton, dismantling their team, leading to a grudge match at Mania 23. My most interesting thing here is they were both heels at the time, so somebody would have had to turn babyface. I assume, maybe not, but trying to think here, you could, there's clips of Edge talking about this on social media with whatever interview, and Edge says the plans for him and Taker at WrestleMania 24, we're like already in before 23. And I just talked about like he kind of had a streak at WrestleMania at the time. So he probably should have won at 23. Regardless, like if those plans were already in for 24 before WrestleMania 23 even came about, I assume Edge still would have been the heel going into the match with Orton. So turning Orton face in 2007, if anybody did turn heel, uh, or should say did turn babyface, would have been pretty interesting to see. And obviously it would have been a kick-ass matchup. And that's all it says here about these rumored WrestleMania 23 plans, but I just thought these were super interesting and again, kind of aligned with one of the uh, videos we'll be making later this week, rebooking a WrestleMania. I believe it's going to be WrestleMania 36, but I might still do WrestleMania 23 in the future as well. But this is pretty cool. Let me know if there's any articles that you guys know of out there talking about past plans. I might try to dig up some stuff myself of previous WrestleMania WrestleManias or whatnot. We can talk about some of these, you know, what if scenarios, if you will, on the road to this year's WrestleMania. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And go find me across all social medias at Noah Nation Vlogs. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.